I saw something where uh, you said that you learned how to fly a helicopter because you looked into the banking system. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? I mean, I mean what's I think, going on right now? Yeah, you almost got your motorcycle. Well, right. right. Like I, I was on a fucking airplane, sitting, flying across the Atlantic to London, sitting next to a guy who was on the U.S. rowing team. Going, he was going to go compete in fucking Finland or Dude, some how shit. shredded was his back? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Seven. He, he, and, and he's sitting there reading this book by Neil Strauss called uh, like fucking How to Survive, some some survival guide thing. And I was interested because Neil Strauss. Josh wrote the Motley Crue book, and he's like this epic writer. I was going to say, talk about a wide variety. Right. And, well, I guess and, it's all about survival if you're talking about Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <that's true. laughs> These yeah. guys somehow survived being right. Motley Crue and going to Singapore. So this, <laughs> so, so this guy explains what the book's about. He's like, oh, well, in, in the case of natural disaster or economic collapse or, you know, nuclear or whatever, like and there was just and, and a whole variety of scenarios which represented shit hitting the fan and the first thing you gotta do is get the fuck out and he said <clears throat> that this guy recommended motorcycles because you could split lanes to get out that's great it's a and, lot cheaper but, than a helicopter license <laughs> 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 but but uh so, so dude so i turn around and like the next fucking... i only have a two-seater too so i'm gonna have to make a selfie's choice <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who's coming? Who's staying? Well, I don't want to so I know one. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I turn around and fucking and, and enroll in motorcycle school because I because I bought onto the idea of this. You know, that's like, cool though. But then you learn something. I know, but here's the fucking thing, dude. Like, what did you as ride? It, it, well, as soon as I enrolled in motorcycle school, and I enrolled, and it's going to be like another weeks before I actually have the the classes. Yeah. As soon as I enrolled, every single fucking everywhere I went, someone's like, "Oh, I get to go visit somebody in the hospital." They were like, you know, yeah. they fucking motorcycle. Motorcycles just kept coming up in conversation, and it was always the worst fucking thing. And then when I got there to the actual class, I realized that like. You gotta have like a clutch on the motorcycle, and I've never even learned how to drive stick in my life. So while they're trying to teach me, I'm like, oh well, fuck, you know, like you gotta remember the clutch, and you know, it just delays your reaction time, and and already, like I'm just like I'm a dead duck. I Can I ask you a question? <laughs> when when you were in, because I took the motorcycle safety course and I got my license and all that, and I rode for like two months, and someone almost took my head off going over the double line in a turn. And I remember, like, coming back, I was running a Triumph Bonneville, and I was literally shaking. And I was, and, and it's funny, because I never pray. So I dial up God for the first time in years, and it's like, oh, look who called. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, Bill? Right? So, <laughs> you never call just to say hi, do you? So I, <laughs> this fucking guy puts me on speaker doing this shit, right? So I fucking, um, I just said, if you let me get back, to Dean Del Rey's garage without losing my leg or my life. I swear to God, I'll never ride this fucking thing again. And I didn't. But now I kind of got it back again. And I'm thinking of getting like a dirt bike just to ride around. I, I fly out of this little little ass airport and I'm just, just going to ride around there where it's safe. So I still have the skill. Yeah. So I know how to do it. Because I think they're, they're, they're fucking badass, man. I, I But when you took the class, didn't you look at a couple people just being like, why? This person's going to die. Right. Yeah. I remember well, that, that was Steve. And they yeah, were looking the, at the, him the, like that. It was a three-day class. The, the first day was in a classroom. The second day was in a parking lot. And the third day was in a parking lot. And I fucking quit after the, the first parking lot day. I, I'm a motorcycle school dropout. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now it didn't it didn't you hurt just, you could have just completed because you would have got through i know it. but but here's the here's the thing and then you know how to do it and you don't I, have to run i almost shouldn't say this but but after my first day in the parking lot actually riding the motorcycle i had a date later that night with like i didn't want to say anything a fucking <laughs> really like she was like <laughs> voted by Maxim Magazine like the seventh hottest woman on the planet. <laughs> so the, the next day to get up, the next day to get up to go to class. And, and when she asked bad. if I wanted to meet her dogs, 
I did. <laughs> and I never left. <laughs> yeah, that's a real... And he you know what? That's a, that's a good excuse for not completing. That's all right. Seventh hottest right, woman in the world. And he I blamed said, it on, like, I, motorcycle I, accidents and deaths. I, 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 said, I said, you know what? I'm not going to go to motorcycle class. I, that shit was going to fucking kill me Dude, anyway. most guys ride <laughs> motorcycles so they can meet that shit. You, you like, preempted it. Yeah, exactly. like, what do I need a motorcycle for? <laughs> yeah. All I'm going to do is get road rash on my dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah wow yeah, you're like but, looking at the stats I just don't think it's right <laughs> it's not safe it's not safe <laughs> and then you just raw dog the random <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> safer but, than riding a motorcycle <laughs> the <laughs> a lot safer the uh so the, the how, how often do you fly your helicopter well what sucks is right now because I'm involved in this I'm not allowed to fly Okay. They're like oh. they, they'd say, okay, you can try and kill yourself after we get a cut of the <laughs> of the movie. So, um, I haven't flown since uh, February, right before, because uh, I didn't realize that. But I mean, I went up with an instructor or whatever. So uh, I'm like, you know, really safe. And those, you know, uh, as my instructor says, uh, aviation is as, as safe as you are. And you would be surprised. Like, there's only two types of pilots. Pilots that know they can die, and then the other people who just show up. Like, I mean, bullshit pre-flight, just fucking cranking and just take off. You look at their whole attitude when they take off. It's like, dude, if you have an engine failure right now, you're just going to nose into the ground. Or you see people, like, flying super low, flying really slow. It's like you're dead. If your engine dies, you don't have enough altitude to regain your airspeed to keep this fucking thing going to go into a flare like an auto rotation and you're fucking dead so they there's like you know with anything dude there's like these major things that if you implement them you look at the weather you do your pre I only fly when it's nice out I only fly up to a certain knot so of winds because I mean I mean I can fly in it but why do I want to be up there fucking bumping around and everything and you know you can you can get the odds in your favor and now, like, you should see, you should, like, I'll show it to you something. Like, the cockpit I have, all glass cockpit, and I'm literally like an air traffic controller now with the, uh, with the technology where you can, back in the day, when I first started flying, like, you were just talking to people. You didn't know where anybody was. It was just um. them reporting. So if you went out, you know, east of here where all these fucking yahoos are who aren't, they don't even talk on the radio, and all of a sudden, they will go flying by you. And you're like, dude, what the fuck? Now you can see them coming. You can literally, like, Put your finger on the screen and their tail number will show up mm. and you can talk to them. The arrow points in what direction they're going. There's a thing that says plus six, minus five, I mean 600 above you. Might. So wow. you, you know exactly where the fuck they are. So. Is that bad for drug smugglers? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got a good one for you. Uh, instructor told me, uh, you know, when, when anytime the vice president or the president comes in town, there's just a massive TFR wherever they are. Uh, uh, temporary flight restriction like you're not allowed oh, okay. to fly in there and if you do you're warned and then you get intercepted by like a fucking I don't know what you know an F-16 which wouldn't work with the helicopter because we fly so slow they'd have to keep going by us <laughs> so they probably send some sort of presidential level uh, secret service helicopter up there um, there was a guy uh, flew into a TFR didn't do his pre-flight and that's one of the things you do you look to see if there's because you get major fucking trouble if you fly into one of those, even if you just fly over Dodger Stadium two hours before the game, yeah. uh, there's a t the two hours before the game and after because there's going to be all of those people. They just, you know, don't fly over that. If you fly into that, the FAA is calling your tail number. I mean, I don't know what happens. I don't want to find out what happens. So this fucking idiot did not check and he flew right into it and he wasn't on the radio and he got intercepted and they landed and it turned out it was a drug smuggler coming oh, up from Mexico which usually then you're not going to be on the radio but at least <laughs> fly around the shit and they forced him down and he had a whole plane full of drugs and that was Fuck. it and if he had just looked at his TFRs he could have still been bringing cocaine into this country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't even fly a drone over Dodger Stadium during the game where you go to jail. I mean, it's pretty Did you fly crazy. a drone over Dodger Stadium during the game? No. <laughs> Dude, there's a guy and they can't find him. And I don't understand why. The guy has a fucking jetpack. Yeah. And he's, he's been hovering right outside. Like every couple of months, he'll just be there. At Dodger and, Stadium? No, at LAX. And he's he's sitting there like he's at fucking Buck Rogers. 
to say. So my thing is like, how many people buy jetpacks? Like, we can't get some people on this. So the funniest shit ever that's online, you have to listen to the radio calls. Is they're talking to somebody flying in anywhere from three to six hundred people. Going, yeah, just let you know, after the left, you got a uh, guy in a jetpack, and then the pilot's like, yeah, we see him. <laughs> and what he just, and everybody sees this shit, and he just... <laughs> just <sitting. laughs> and yeah, they don't know who he is, right? It's like a mystery. I don't understand on what black market this guy bought this fucking jetpack. Yeah. Because I remember I was watching the first 48 one time, and this fucking idiot bought a 50 caliber Desert Eagle, and I guess not a lot of people have them, and he killed somebody with them, and then they just went, all right, who bought a Desert Eagle? They had, it was like, you should have become the first 48 people. minutes. They fucking, they fucking caught this guy in like an hour. That's the best show ever. Yeah, well, I, I got a, a buddy of mine, former cop, hates that show. Because uh, okay. I was watching that show going well, like, I don't understand why they keep talking. I'm like, all you do is say, <laughs> right. am I, I being charged with anything? If I am, if I want a lawyer, if not, I'm leaving. He goes, that's why I hate that show. Because it, it teaches dirtbags right. how to beat the system. I, the worst one I ever saw was they brought this guy in and they go, and there was some old guy that was got murdered in the park. And then they say to this guy, he's a suspect. And they go, <laughs> they go, hey, do you know old man Johnson or whatever? He's like, yeah, yeah, I know him. He goes, you good friends with him? He goes, yeah, I see him around. He goes, uh, well, uh, I hate to tell you this, but we uh, we just found him in the park. He was murdered. And the guy just worse acting ever. He stands like, what? Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just sign the confession. <laughs> and he just literally watched a guy it, it take does, somebody's it, life away and just throw their whole life. It's like, that guy's going to jail for the rest of his fucking right. life. He should have taken an acting class because when his moment came, <laughs> he would have been ready. He should have watched the first it. 48. Yeah. 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 It's yeah always just ask weird. for a fucking lawyer. <laughs> you, ever, you, you ever see that picture of the Ramirez brothers courtside like an hour before right, they the, their, the, the, the Menendez. The Menendez, like the twin brothers or whatever. There's yeah. like a picture of them at a basketball game sitting courtside. Everybody's like cheering and they're just like straight faced. It's an eerie fucking picture, and they're like, "This was like two hours before they murdered their parents." Wow. Isn't that Jeez. weird? Wow! Yeah. I mean, it'd be weirder if they were like stoked and like cheering and happy, yeah. you know? Yeah. That well, kind of. You know what that just reminded me of? Do you remember in Scarface when there's the comedian on stage and everybody's cheering and all of that stuff, and everybody's watching, and Tony's coked in the corner, and everybody's dying laughing, and then they just, the Palma just pans across, and there's two people just sitting there. Like that, and the ones with the Uzis under a napkin. <laughs> yeah. I love the Uzis under a napkin. Like at some point, <laughs> they just took them out and then put. Would you like something to drink? Hang on a second. Let me just put this yeah. right here. Yeah. Where he's like, let me get that napkin. Like, no, 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 don't touch That's the right. napkin. Leave the napkin. America. If you thought Jackass Forever was crazy, oh boy, do I have a show for you. It's a multimedia comedy show called The Bucket List Tour. And the stuff I filmed for this show is way too hot for Jackass. Like the general anesthesia bike ride, the vasectomy Olympics, and skyjacking. The footage is so intense, we have full grown men passing out at almost every city this bus goes to. So if you think you can handle it, get your tickets right now at stevo.com. Yeah.